Alright, welcome back. We're playing Battle Brothers and we're continuing on our expert campaign here. Just leveling up our guys for what we've done with those battles. But uh, once you get above, what is it, level 10 or 11, then you start to just get one point every level. So it definitely shows the importance of having characters that have good traits so you can get those extra stars to be where you need to go. Now it's like I feel like I gotta get his hit chance up, but I could also do a bunch of fatigue. Because then I can put him in heavy armor too. His resolve is pretty low, which I'm a little bit worried about. But maybe we can turn him into like the coward tank or something. And if nothing else, maybe he just ends up getting sacrificed when we're fighting a boss or something if he's tanky enough to get into some fights. But I don't know what all these uh, final boss battles are going to include. I mean, I know about the Goblin City. I've been told that there's the Kraken, and I think that's the quest we're starting to activate when we need to get these Ungol uh, um, hides. But unfortunately, we got to fight three more of those. I don't know if there's an Orc one. I know there's the Black Monolith, and... And I think there's another one, like a library or something. We did actually discover that down south. But I was told that was pretty challenging, so I wanted to level up a little bit here. But I feel like now that we're starting to get pretty close to uh, being where we need to go, we should be able to just kind of maybe start doing some of these objectives here. I also want to just explore the map and find all the legendary locations too to see what all those events are. I know there's something we gotta do with that armor that we got when we killed the uh, Berserker. But unfortunately, being so far onto the map right now, there's not a good place for us to sell and keep recovering to get in and out. So it's kind of an obnoxious thing. I suspect what I I gotta decide whether I want to keep going to the all the way to the west side there because I'm getting better prices and potentially better mercenaries to hire or whether I just keep going back and forth to the uh, eastern city there. I've seen orcs do those uh, yell before. So let's just take down those warriors. Oh, well, that's because he's an orc hero. I didn't even realize how foolish of me. does decent damage when he hits you. Yeah, if I move you up, you'll be ready for the next round of attacks. That was probably a mistake, because now I... Ha well, he's going to retreat here, so I don't think I need to worry about it. Keep chopping through there. Good job, one hit. You should be dead as long as you get past the armor. There we go. There we go, and we even got a helm, so that's pretty nice. It's actually going to be something we're probably going to want to use, I imagine. Yeah, it's another 320, so it's a heavy helm. That one's only 200 something. That's a 300 regular. That's a regular. So, 100 something. If I do that, I'll get you a slightly increase to your fatigue. I 
I'll get you to 228, then I can put that on him. That one's still better. Alright, keep exploring. Goblin hideout. Alright, good. This should be much quicker. Those ones where it's like 20, 30 guys get to be a little obnoxious with how long that ends up taking, but when they're 12, it's not quite so bad. Four, six, eight, ten, eleven. So there, I think there's one guy I can't see yet. Unless my math is no good. Alright. Fire away. Ah, come on, guys. Crossing the distance here. Excellent. Trying to break free. Just netting me. Good job. Overseers taken out. Get you out of your net. Let's see, because if I can clear those guys out, then we can start attacking. Oh. There you go. Nice. I think he's getting ready to run. Shifting north here. Alright, it says there's two left, but I only see one. So I'm not sure where this other guy is. Oh, there he is. I was already having pinned down. Lock these guys down if you can. Should be able to get the kill. There we go. Yeah, some stuff to sell, but nothing crazy. Crappy helm there. Those stupid clubs aren't worth anything. Shields aren't worth anything. Oh, we got all a bunch of crap here. I'd like to figure out what to do with that barbarian armor here. Because I'm worried I'm going to accidentally sell the damn thing. I'd also like to find some mongols so I can turn that in. All this running land has increased the stamina of the men. All this running about the land has increased the stamina of the men. One runs in place, holding a finger to his neck and remarks that his heart rate isn't going up at all. Another brother remarks that the guy doesn't even know how to count. The running man pauses. Oh, that's right. Fatigue. I 
really want to fight some barbarians because they're pretty tough. I think I might have to come back for those guys. Unknown. Barbarians. Now we got, we might as well clear out some of these orcs and goblins down here. Should probably be charging me here. I was going to say, why are you not stunning me? experience and sometimes the berserkers with their chains do uh, AOE attack that will kill their own guys. still a lot of junk in here that I wanted to exchange out, I think. I think those flails actually sell for quite a bit. And that strange meat's about to go bad in one day. So we can get rid of some of that. Clubs don't sell for anything. Alright, exploring or going to do... Yeah, we'll sell. Now there's a little place here too, huh? I think I discovered that when I was coming back. I forgot about it. Decent enough prices that we just sell. Oops, shit. Well, that just cost me like everything for this whole run here. That sucks. Got a little click happy there. Yeah, I don't even know if I got 2,000 out of there. I think it might actually just cost me money by selling it here. A regular nut. Got these extra helms. Might as well sell some of them. I don't, I don't think I need three of those crossbows. Let's sell some of these extra ungle hearts. I don't need any more of those nets, so we might as well sell those too. Buy a little food. Come over here. See what we can get into. And it looks like it's going to be the undead. Should be a pretty straightforward, quick battle for us. I don't know if he's going to have undead heroes or geis. Oh, wait. Actually, I do. He told us that we're going to have geis. That's one thing I don't like about this game. 
as the farther I get and I'm doing this exploration, it seems to get like a little redundant because there's only so many variations that they have of the troops. So it's like, uh, are we going to keep pushing this or not? I think how it usually goes is you pretty much just start with one of those parties and you make it through your end game. And then once that's done, you retire your party and that's like your playthrough because it definitely seems like the start to the, meet, the middle of the game seems to be where it's most interesting. I don't know if many people are doing what I am, where you just kind of go through, explore the whole map, find all the legendary locations, and clear out the strongholds. Because what I think happens is I assume some of these strongholds are going to respawn, but I'm not actually sure how that works. Like, we've gone through this area multiple times, and there was nothing there, but now there is, so... But I don't know if I'll do another playthrough of this game after we beat this one. I think I might as well just kind of complete it. And then unless something changes, I don't know if I would really make a, another one. Because I don't know what would really change significantly. I mean, there's definitely things that would be way more efficient to do now that I have an understanding of the mechanics of the game compared to when I started. But once you've seen all the legendary locations, kind of get an idea of what the battles are. I don't know. I thought there was going to be, like, a little more structure to the game. I mean, I like that it's kind of definitely make, like, make your own adventure type situation, and I think that definitely helps the repay value. But I guess I was just thinking the end scenarios were going to be a uh, little more scripted and a little more story objective, something like that. I mean, I think there's tons of random encounters and things that uh, also make the game pretty interesting too because you never know which one you're going to get. But now it seems like even those are a little bit redundant. Now, I suspect some of those events are actually seem to actually be triggered by the class of your party member. So I wonder if I got different members for my party, if that would trigger another set of events. Because we've had the one with the anatomist a couple of times, and then we've had one with the retired soldier where he helps improve our guys. Where the hell is that dog going? hoping I was going to kill the guys. There we go. Yeah, so a little bit to sell, but it's all pretty low tier. Yeah, I think I want to clear out some of these goblin places. Then we can attack the city. I think we have to clear the gates out. Yeah, so these are going to be the big places here. Come on, guys. Yeah, I think some other things that I would uh, do differently is how you get spawned in. It's kind of annoying that all your guys have to be together like this. So I wish there was a way you could space them out a little bit more. So then when you are doing things like fighting the goblin shamans, you don't have them all grouped together so they don't get trapped and then you can kind of close the distance a little bit differently with different parties against different enemy formations and then perhaps the enemies would have some different formations too like they would have their wolf riders start in the northeast kind of coming with a flank and so everybody just kind of being on opposite sides of the uh, field here and you just move into each other and slam into each other I mean there's definitely some strategy with the positioning of the units, but I just feel like there could be a little more 
what would you say, variation so it doesn't start to become tedious. Because it definitely feels like there's a little bit of tedium. And I think the biggest part that makes it feel kind of tedious is the, uh, the cart and the item management. So I think I've mentioned this before, but I always I thought it would be pretty cool if you could like buy a warehouse at a town or something like that. And you could store a lot of the items you're not using there when you're not wanting to sell it. And then you could set up some sort of mechanic like, oh, you can, you know, get some merchants that will work on maximizing the sell the sale cost or something like that, so then you're not having to go back and forth to cities as much, but I think the whole point of you go into the bigger cities is you also need to go there to try to get, you know, the famed items and, you know, new soldiers and things like that to try to get more elite people instead of having the same crew for most of the game like what we have. I think that's pretty atypical. And I am worried by we, as we continue to advance into this late game, our guys are starting to get some injuries and, you know, they have really poor vision, especially when I have all their high-tier equipment on. And at night, I'm not even sure some of these guys can hit a square or two because of how low their vision is. Uh, I should have uh, engaged those units a little bit more. Yeah, or something else that could be a little bit cooler is, you know, their backstory is affected a little bit by... And I just think their roles are probably, in terms of their traits, are, you know, maybe a little class dependent. But the fact that everybody has the same skills, it would be kind of cool if, you know, different backgrounds had some variation in the uh, abilities that they could train to. That might be a little more interesting. You know, like lumberjacks have an affinity for, you know, axe weapons or something. You know, I think the hunters and poachers are more likely to have better ranged damage, but, you know. Uh, right now, other than just to know what those starting stats are and where the stars are, and occasionally you'll get your uh, trait, but the trait doesn't seem to be class specific, so you just... One, need to be lucky to get a trade, and two, it's random which one you're going to get from what I can tell. Now, let me know if that's not true, but that's what it seems to be like from my experiences. I th oh, and the other thing that I wish they would do is they would stack your crafting items, because I feel like I'm being penalized by wanting to play around with these crafting items. I feel like they're taking way too much of my inventory space up. That might be just my issue because I like to hoard things, but I'm just not sure how. I've been told how difficult these end missions can be, and I'm not like sure. Oh, do I need to save all these poison for these end missions if they're too difficult to get additional damage? Like, what do I have to do here? I'm not sure. like how we got those holy waters on that one scripted event. I've never seen those before. I don't think I can make them. So I assume that's to help me when I fight the undead fortress. Did that dog just die? Did I just kill my own dog? No, that killed the wolf. That's what that was. I was like, how the hell did I attack my own guy? Alright, they're starting to run away now. Good job. I see our fatigue is starting to kick in.
I'd like to kill the shaman too, because I assume you get more points, experience points for killing a more elite unit. my dog at this rate. Hope not, that's gonna cost me money. Alright, he is not. I don't know if the dogs are gonna be able to catch anybody else though. I think we might just be done. Yep. Alright, what's the verdict? Nice. Nice. Alright, so we're getting some uh more legendary items. I was starting to get a little disgruntled that we weren't getting these. Yeah, I think people have mods and things for this game too, so I suspect some of those suggestions may be something that other people have thought of too, and there may be mods for it. I just didn't want to have to go on to the sketchy websites and download things. It's kind of, it's too bad, like how uh, Darkest Dungeon, you go to Steam and then they have that... Uh, whole community section where you can just download the mods right from there. I, I don't think that works for Battle Brothers, but I think you have to go to third-party sites to do that, and I'm always worried I'm going to pick up some virus or something. Yeah, you know, that's... I wonder if it wouldn't make sense to put that on one of my archers. Yep. Sixteen, seventeen, one sixty for one more. And that one's a little better. All right, let's level you up. See, I feel like I should be doing some stuff with fatigue, but then I also want to. That's just 10 points right there, so that's like a big stat boost. It's like I want him to be tanky, but I also gonna need to put him in heavy armor if I'm gonna make him a tank, so... I don't know how important it is that he hits everything, and maybe it's just more important that he just runs in there and face tanks things. Uh, do I sell? Do I keep pushing? Let's sell. We're getting kind of lower on our supplies. We've got a lot of armor damage from clearing these guys out. Uh, nothing too exciting here, unfortunately. sell that. These guys should like their salts. Let's get rid of those. Drops me down to 147. It's just so nice being having a one-stop shop here for all of our supplies. Yeah, nothing too exciting there. Potions. I guess if I had new people, maybe buying those potions could be good. Get some more experience. What do we got here? Hyenas? Maybe I'd be able to do something with the taxidermist with them. Out of them. That's 
is going well. See what happens here. Hopefully we can stop them from attacking my archers. Maybe bring him down one. Because I assume they're going to have enough movement to get to the archers, but maybe not. Yeah, they would have got, they got there. Effectively attacking some wild animals who shouldn't be missing these. Well, the good thing with this is not only should I maybe do something with the taxidermist, but it uh, will get me closer to completing my ambition as well. I've been kind of neglecting that. Gives me four out of five. Oh shit, does this not have a taxidermist? For some reason I thought this place had one. Oh, maybe we just buy a bunch of food while we're here too. stuff lasts for so long with the cook. Alright, maybe let's investigate this goblin city here. You can level up. Let's do that. I guess we can just... It's... Of course, when I'm going to actually not do it, now it's up to three. Let's get your Pathfinder. Because I do like... Having him do the extra movement. I think we need to bring out our A-team. Because I assume this is going to be a difficult battle. Everybody should be leveled up. I'm a little surprised they're not very happy, but it is what it is. Alright, Sigurd shakes his head. May the old gods have mercy upon us for allowing such a sight. The goblin city is sequestered between the opposing mountains, saying the goblins built their city around the mountains is like saying a soldier sheathed his sword in his enemy's chest. The gibbering green skids didn't add to the terrain. They desecrated the whole place, putting mines where trees used to be, constructing a maze of rusted shanties and lean toes. Raising cultish totems and digging primitive sacrificial pits, piling unused timber as though the mutilation of the mountain was not truly finished without blatant waste. But beyond the goblin rubbish does stand the central core of the city, a number of towers unambiguously set apart from the riffraff. These are clearly ancient requisitions, the stonework being unlike anything you've ever seen, and surely beyond the greenskin scope of construct, of construct. The goblins walking amongst the walls are upright and boastful, as though invigorated by being allowed to stride on such hallowed grounds. Nestled inside the fortress seem to be some sort of higher nobility, well-dressed goblins with servants walking about, which means the same thing it does when it comes to humans. There's good, good loot to be had. A rare sight are the little ones running about families, if that's what greenskins truly have will mean that the fight here will be a vicious one. The little maggots will have more to protect than just their savageness and greed, and that which must extend itself beyond its own vices is also to which has been weakened. What's the plan? After observing the cities for a time, you know that you can't simply assault it head-on. There are far too many to take on, and with the numbers already on their side, it is even likely the families of the goblins will partake in your slaughter, and you will only have enshrined the whole city with further experience in slaughtering humans. So wait and think. And then the man approach and then the man approaches. He is bound in light armor and leafy with a leafy hood used to camouflage the metal beneath, and a multitude of sword clanks from his hip, and a spear yokes across his back one way, and an axe the other, and a bandolier of potions chime as he comes to a halt. You can't see his face, much less his eyes. He's dripping with blood of recent action, despite their cruelties and cruelties 
cruel appearance. The goblins are in a waste a civilized group. They will respond to violence. That is, at its base, nothing more than a senseless savagery. If you wish to draw them out, then you must do as the orcs do. My plan it was to slaughter as many as I could in the fields, raiding party scouts, the like, but it is just as well that their encampments are destroyed in great number. Together, the carnage will pincer their fear upon their fears, for they fear reckless orcs more than anything and will seek to preventively snuff them out. The man nods as though you already agreed on to something, so choose traveler the manner in which you wish to leave this lay, have the city laid flat, slaughter the raiding parties and scouts, or burn the fort outpost. Whatever you do, you'll I'll do the other alone. We shall meet back here. We'll take on the fort. We'll slaughter the raiding parties. You tell the battle brothers, slaughter the guard the feeling nods out travel, good choice. The disappearance of these parties will put strain on the Greenskins' beliefs. They're naturally scouts and raiders, so those in the and that ilk go missing, it unnerves them to the core. The forward post will retreat and spread rumors of the city, and out shall come an exempt, exempt expedition, oh, expeditionary force. You, While you take them in the fields, I shall take them, and the cabins and destroyed by my own experience. You need to destroy somewhere between ten parties, and that should be sufficient. Let's head off. But you call out who he is. Alright, so I gotta destroy ten. We can do that. <laughs> Yeah, so I was going to do the uh, fortresses because I thought that was going to be the easiest one. But it doesn't spawn new fortresses in there, and I've already cleared them out. So I did it totally ass backwards. So now I'm going to have to fight these part raiding parties when really I should have just gone to the freaking city first. And then I could have just attacked all the freaking outposts around the city, and we could have just rapidly completed that objective so I'm a little pissed off about that that I did that backwards but I just assumed we were gonna fight I didn't think it was gonna be like this story event situation so I definitely shot myself in the foot with that unfortunately because I think this is gonna add a bunch of time on now that I've got to go around finding all these parties to engage guys are not hard to kill. It's like you gotta leave a little opening. Or else, if you, well, I should say, if you leave an opening, it gets kind of annoying, because then they're all gonna keep running around circles around you trying to get to your archers. But if you just lock them down like what I have here, then they'll just charge you, which makes it a little bit quicker. What I don't know is all these raiding parties, are they gonna be... Uh, you know, wolf warriors or wolf riders or whatever they're called, or is it going to be multiple variations? I'm not sure. Yeah, we're not going to be able to catch up with a wolf rider, so. Yeah, so I can't do it anything until I get through there. Alright, that sucks. Well, I guess we'll just keep exploring and see if we find uh, some goblins running around. I've got some orcs here. Now I wonder if we fight other cities is it just that we have to do, what, ten battles with goblins, or does it have to actually be outside of locations? But then I think the goblins spawn from those forts, so I guess I can't kill. Maybe what I'll have to do is just kind of camp around those fortresses and wait for enemy units to spawn around them. Yeah, that's kind of frustrating, actually. 
Yeah, the more I think about that, the more frustrated I am. Well, maybe what's going to happen is I can use this as an opportunity to start trading our uh, weaker guys. I mean, part of me wants to, uh, you know, surge forward. And the fastest way to do that is to use the guys that have already leveled. Chop through your armor already. to a close. Nothing too exciting. Alright, well, let's just keep exploring, I guess. I see footprints here. Gonna be running out of food here shortly. Just keep uh, exploring here. I guess this is good that it's encouraging me to finally keep advancing here. Hmm. Thought he was gonna die, I'm not gonna lie. guys down here. Big things, I just don't want to keep getting stunned. I think they only stun you when they're a couple squares away from you. Nothing fun, exciting, but at least we're able to do multiple battles now before we uh, fill our inventory up, so that's a positive sign. Got some of those stupid uh, shields there. Alright, let's bring those guys in. Let them keep healing. A plethora. I wonder if that's going to be like one of those 30 places. Let's not do a plethora. A uh, frickin' swamp. Now, I'm kind of surprised I haven't found any ungles or anything. Oh, alright, here we go. Got some goblins over here. 
Oh, shit. Come back. Damn it. A plethora. Yeah, a plethora is a lot. Well, obviously a plethora is a lot. That was a stupid thing to say. Um, but that's the higher tier. Well, let's just pull everybody around, I guess. I guess we'll just leave the top open and let them come to me. Charge in, Wolf Riders. Yeah, see, they just won't attack. They're like all trying to run to the top here. here. Question is, will they engage me or are they going to run all the way around now? Alright, good. They're starting to get pissed off, which means they're aggroing. Missing an awful lot of these attacks here. dog going. Yeah, it's like just trying to wall in here. But this is what I'm worried about. It's just gonna is I hope I don't need to do this same battle ten times. I assume it's just the luck of the draw that I keep getting into the, these battles. And not that this is what their raiding parties are. skip ahead and then they'll all run away. Yep. And nothing too exciting. Nope, still got some of that. Get rid of this. Well, you know I'm over here, so I suppose I got another goblin place. Another goblin place. So it did spawn new places in. Oh my god. Alright, well, now I'm doubly disappointed in myself. Alright, well, let's sell some of our shit, I guess. Prices look like they're pretty pathetic. And there's no supplies here. Well, I guess we're going to come up here. Shit, there's no supplies over here either. Alright, taxidermist, what can I do? Hyena fur? Okay. I'm trying to save up the ungol hides. Nope, yep, I gotta go run. I might as well buy the furs. Those are, I think, the same guys that were there last time, right? I guess we can come over this way, see if there's going to be anything too exciting. Sometimes there's ungles over here. Those guys are still battling over everything. It's like, let's just buy up the supplies to make sure. Bruno the Bandit. Alright. Oh, here we go. Nice. 